When you hear the word GT1030, how does that resonate with you? Do you hear entry-level gaming card? Maybe basic display adapter, or perhaps the word beast comes to mind. Well, probably not that, but you're probably thinking, dear God, I hope it's not the DDR4 model. Either way, the words GT1030 don't exactly inspire gaming competence in most of us. Well, hello people, this is Mike, and welcome to F2F Tech. Well, something I've been pondering over the past couple of weeks was how would a GT1030 stack up against some of the flagship cards from yesteryear? Well, since I'm a video card hoarder, I decided to dig through my collection to see what I could find. Now, I've been meaning to test my ASUS HD5870 Matrix Platinum for the longest time, so I think we'll go that route. And uh, while I'm at it, let's throw in the GTX 480 for good measure. So let's jump in and take a quick look at today's contenders. As it's starting to cool down outside, it's probably best we start things off with a nice and toasty card, like the infamous GTX 480. Now the original Fermi, otherwise known as Thermi, hasn't received the best attention across the hardware review industry for obvious reasons. If you watched some of my previous videos, you probably noticed the old starter log still does pretty well in some modern games at 1080p and is pretty surprising at 1440p. Now let's take a look at my favorite HD5870, the ASUS Matrix Platinum 2GB. While it might be more fair to test the reference HD5870, unfortunately, I don't own one. And uh, let's be honest, this card is hella sexy, so who cares about the reference card anyway, right? Well, while spec-wise, this card isn't much different on paper versus the reference card, now the biggest change comes in with a 5% boost to core clocks, the PCB design, and the power delivery. This card practically begs to be overclocked, but the lackluster cooler isn't doing it any favors here. Maybe with some proper water cooling, I think we could have a bit of fun with this card. And the last card in our roundup is a whittle bitty GT1030. And don't worry, this isn't the DDR4 version, it's the faster GDDR5 variant. Now the GT1030 uses a Pascal-based GP108 core, which is built on a 14 nanometer process, and the die size is only 74 millimeters squared. And I want you to think about that. That's 86% smaller than the GTX 480 and 77% smaller than the HT5870. Now the GT1030 variant we have here today is the MSI low profile overclock model, which does have about a 3% higher base and boost clock over the reference cards. This is one of the few GT1030s that comes with HDMI, DisplayPort, and active cooling. All right, now that we met today's contenders, I wanted to mention a couple more things before we jump into today's benchmarks. Now, I did choose 11 games and four synthetic benchmarks, but they're not all new. I chose games that are relatively old and some that are not. So it's a more of a well-rounded view of how all of the cards perform. Now, the GT1030, we kind of know how it performs in a lot of newer games, but... How does it perform in older titles? Well, today we'll find out. I also wanted to mention the advertised boost clocks for the GT1030 are extremely conservative. So in most cases, boost clocks jumped over 1700 megahertz, and in some games they went down to 1620 on the core, but I found in a lot of the games that I tested, the boost clocks averaged around 1683 megahertz. So keep that in mind when looking at these benchmarks. Also, here's a quick view of today's test system and the OS I used, and all of the drivers that I use for each card. Okay, so the first game up, you probably have never heard of, and it runs really great on most 486-based systems. Anyway, uh, here we can see the older DX11 flagships come out on top, and the, uh, the 480 leads the 5870 by around 4%, but it slaps around the GT1030 by a whopping 33%. Now frame times do have some inconsistencies with all the cards, but the GTX 480 performed the best here. I also wanted to note this time demo benchmark renders about 4100 frames in total, and since this game engine is tied to the frame rate in this time demo, some cards finish quicker than others, and that's why the frame time lengths differ. CSGO is the next game we tested, and here we use the community-made benchmark, and we can see the 5870 takes the lead here. It beats the 480 by about 4% and crushes the 1030 by about 32%. Now, frame times were good on all the cards tested, but the GTX 480 did have some hiccups here and there. Now, I will mention the community-made benchmark is pretty accurate when it comes to average frame rates, but the unrealistic smoke sections cause the Wolverine effect you see here, and it does throw off our frame time numbers quite a bit. 
Battlefield 3 is up, and our benchmark run is very close to how Steve from TechSpot slash Hardware and Box tested this game back in the day, as it's a canned scene that is pretty close to actual gameplay. Now we can see the GTX 480 leads the pack in this game, and it beats the 5870 out by a big 31%, and leads the 1030 by 25%. The frame times were excellent for the NVIDIA cards, but the Radeon suffered quite a bit of frame time inconsistencies. Now they're not quite as drastic as Fraps makes them out to be. There's quite a bit more to this frame time drama, but it's kind of a topic for another day, so on with the show. The beautiful Bioshock Infinite is the next game on our roster, and we use the built-in benchmark to capture our numbers. And again, we see the 480 lead the charge. It beats out the 5870 by 17%, and the 1030 by 27%. Now frame times did have some inconsistencies with all the cards tested, uh, but the HD 5870 fared the worst. Who doesn't love the Metro series? If you haven't played any of them, I definitely would recommend you to. So we benchmarked the original Metro 2033, and again we used the built-in benchmark for our capture. The 480 once again takes the lead by 40% over the 5870, and 32% over the 1030. A good old Thermi is uh, on a roll. The GTX 480 did fare well in the frame time department, but the other two guys had some troubles here and there. GTF 5 is the next game on our list, and due to the continued popularity, we had to benchmark it. Now we captured the last section of the built-in benchmark to get our results, and from the looks of it, the GTX 480 is crowned king once again. Now it ends up 30% faster versus a 5870, and 20% faster than the 1030. And while it looks like there's a lot of micro stutter shown on the frame time graph, the millisecond swing isn't very large, so they're not really felt here. Now the Radeon had a couple of hiccups, but overall, most of the cards did pretty well. For Honor is a pretty okay game, and this one is very well optimized. Now while the settings we chose were a bit steep for these cards, I'm still impressed by what they were able to do at 1080p. Now I did use the built-in benchmark to get my results, and the 480 beat out the 5870 by a huge 65%, and it beat the 1030 by 40. Ouch. So the GTX 480 did see some random spikes here and there, but this, my friends, is what frame times should look like. Now if I was to set the graphics presets to low and lower the resolution, this game would be very playable on all these cards. And judging by these frame times, it would be stutter free. Far Cry 5 is the next game we tested, and it proved to be way too much for these cards at 1080p with the normal settings. Now we did use the built-in benchmark to capture our performance numbers, and this time we saw AMD lead the pack, edging out both the 480 and the 1030 by 14%. Frame times look good here as well, just with a couple of frame spikes here and there. Now on to Rainbow Six Siege, and this game is still very popular, and again we use the built-in benchmark to capture our performance numbers. Here, the 1030 earned its first win. It beat the 480 by 2% and the 5870 by 15%. The Radeon had some issues here and there with frame times, but overall, it's a good showing for all the cards. And the second to last game is the reason you don't see kids play outside anymore. We tried to use pro-like settings, which consists of the low preset and the draw distance and textures set to epic. We used the replay capture to ensure we captured the same run for consistency. Now again, the 480 came out on top, but it only beat the 1030 by 5%. Now it did end up slapping around the 5870 a little bit, and it beat it by 26%. Now frame times for the older cards did suffer some random spikes here and there, but overall gameplay was smooth on all the cards using these settings. Now the last game we tested is the 2016 version of Doom, and I used the beginning of the game for our benchmark capture as it tends to be pretty intensive and pretty close if not heavier than actual gameplay. Now the medium preset we used was a bit too much for these cards and in retrospect I should probably use lower settings and maybe a little bit lower of a resolution. Now the 1030 came out on top again, besting the 480 by 2% and besting the 5870 by a huge 90%. I'm not sure what happened to the Radeon here, but it could have to do with the fog or the post-processing use in this scene of the benchmark. Now, obviously frame times are not looking so hot for uh, Mr. Radeon, but the rest of the cards are doing pretty well. The GT1030 was also tested using Vulkan, but it appeared that the OpenGL uh, API was a little bit faster in this game. All right, we're gonna tally up the 11 games that we tested, 
and we can see the GTX 480 is about 18% faster than the GT 1030 and about 17% faster than the 5870. Now it's interesting to see how the 480 and the Choice 5870 stack up today. I think it's safe to say the 480 has aged better. And I also find it interesting that the GT 1030 is about equal with the 5872 gigabyte in this game roundup. Now that the games are done, let's jump straight into the synthetic benchmarks. And the first one up is 3D Mark 2006. Now we use the standard preset and we can see the 480 leads the pack as the 1030 is about 12% slower and the 5870 is about 7% slower. Now 3D Mark Firestrike is up next and we use the standard benchmark. This time the GT 1030 comes out on top. Now it ends up beating the 480 by about 3% and the 5870 by about 12%. Next, let's jump over to some Unigen synthetic benchmarks. And the first one up is the Valley benchmark. Now we use the Extreme HD preset for our testing. And again, the GTX 480 came out on top as it beats the 1030 by about 50% and it beats the 5870 by only 5%. Now next we have the Unigen Superposition benchmark. And here we selected the Medium preset. It was nice to see the 5870 came out on top this go around, but it barely beat the 480 by around a half a percent. It did much better versus a 1030 where it maintained a 16% advantage. Here is a quick look at the low temperatures in an ambient of 23C. And please note that all the cards we tested were using the stock auto fan speed settings. So it's out of the box. Now we used Unigen superposition to load all of the GPUs and we took our measurements once the GPU temps stabilized. And we can see the older cards get a bit toasty as expected but my new GTX 480 runs surprisingly cool compared to the previous one. Let's jump over to power consumption. Now these numbers were taken at the wall with a kilowatt meter, and this is the measurement for the entire PC. Now once again, we use the Unigen superposition to stress the system, and we can see the entire system with the 480 uses about 100% more power compared to the 1030. Now the 480 only uses about 7% more power than the 5870, but keep in mind this 5870 uses about 20% more power versus the reference design. Now these numbers are taken at the wall, so they do not account for PSU efficiency. All right, conclusion time. So there we have it. We looked at 11 total games, both old and new, and we tested a handful of synthetics. We measured power consumption and looked at temperatures. And it's pretty clear the 1030 doesn't kill it when it comes to overall performance, but performance per watt when compared to these old gas guzzlers looks pretty awesome in my opinion. It's pretty crazy what seven years can do in the GPU world. Now it's obvious in modern games, the HD 5870 and the GTX 480 are not gonna blow your socks off. And as more and more titles will use DX11 and Vulkan, these two might not have a place for much longer. Now, yes, I know Fermi supports DX12, but it's rather basic and limited, and it doesn't work in most native DX12 games. Now, not only that, the lack of driver updates means bug fixes are just not gonna happen at all. So games like Assassin's Creed Origins and Ghost Recon Wildlands are gonna have visual artifacts that persist, and it's only gonna get worse in the future. Now also to be clear, that doesn't mean these two older cards are completely worthless. They still play plenty of modern games that will run fine. And you can always dial down the settings and resolution to get a playable experience. Now Fortnite and CSGO ran very well and there's plenty of other esports games that will run great and older titles will always be a non-issue. Anyway, the objective of this video was to show you how the GT 1030 performs in these newer and older titles against these DX11 beasts of yesteryear. I'm not trying to convince anybody to buy any of these cards or make any recommendations. This was purely to quench my curiosity and I wanted to share my results with you. I do plan on spending more time with the GT 1030 as I do find it to be an interesting little card. Well, that's it. I appreciate it if you stuck around to the end of the video. And if you like this type of content and you're not already subscribed, then please consider it. I'm getting very close to my personal goal of 10,000 subs, which is pretty exciting. Also, if you like this content, then please consider using my affiliate links found in the video's description if you want to show me some love. And uh, it helps support my video card collecting addiction. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch the video.